Hi guys, hope you're all today. Ben here from Pinup Media and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on things you should look for in an acoustic guitar. So as we all know in the current situation of everyone being locked in in this virus, um, it's quite hard to go out and play with other people in noisy band rooms and turn up amplifiers and stuff like that. And what I've noticed is um, so many people are now turning to playing things at home with their acoustic guitars and obviously we've got loads of singer-songwriters that do that as well. So I thought I'd do a little video for anyone interested in maybe getting an acoustic guitar or looking more into them. Just a quick video of things I personally look out for in an acoustic guitar for both performing live and recording. So I think when people go out and get their first acoustic guitar or even a later one, um, they're not always the most easy thing to distinguish between and know the differences about. Unlike if you get an electric guitar or a keyboard or something like that, sometimes has quite obvious different features where an acoustic guitar can just look a bit like a lump of wood. But there's some really important things to look out for and some things that make quite a big difference. So um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the shape of acoustic guitars. So they come in three main shapes usually, which is a dreadnought, which is your classic quite large shape. Handy example here for you, this has a little cutout. Any shapes can come with a different cutout, but generally we base a guitar shape just based on the sort of general size of it, not the cutout. So that's a dreadnought shape, which is sort of your classic acoustic guitar shape. Uh, then we have a smaller one, which I also have an example of handily, which is a parlor guitar which is a bit narrower and smaller and generally a bit more wieldy. And then finally, we have even bigger than the Dreadnought, we have jumbo guitars. Uh, I don't have an example, so maybe I'll just go. So speaking quite generally, all these shapes have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, they can all do everything, but as a quick breakdown, you sort of have your classic Dreadnought shape is just great for chords and just punching through that classic acoustic guitar sound or track, uh, a parlor guitar, is generally great for finger picking and jumbos just have a real huge like low end and high end to them but perhaps lack a bit of that mid-range punch in them so they're all great it's just down to what you like using them for and what sort of sound you like but that's generally how these shapes work and what sort of sound they'll get you so after you've considered what shape you like and what you're going to use it for a really important and obvious thing is wood uh, what wood is it made of? How is it constructed? So it's a really important thing to look out for, I think, on acoustic guitars. Now, you're sort of nicer sounding, and I say generally, because you can have great sound guitar made of anything, um, nicer sound acoustics are generally solid wood all around. So you have a solid wood top, usually spruce, but it can be something else as well, and then something like mahogany back and sides. Uh, in my experience, if you have a solid wood acoustic guitar, it's generally just more expensive sound and it resonates a bit better. And in today's market, you can actually get some really good value solid wood acoustics. So definitely look out for that when you're looking for your next acoustic guitar. Is it all wood and what woods are used? So the next thing to consider is what features you want in an acoustic guitar. Um, are you going to be out playing live? Are you going to be recording? Is this just a guitar for you to play around with at home? Um, so after you've sort of considered that, the first thing I'd look for really in terms of features is preamp and what preamp it has, can it plug in? Uh, if you're playing live, that's pretty much a must. You can get clip-on tuner, uh, clip-on pickups, but I've gone down that route personally with guitars that don't have pickups and it can be um, a little bit expensive. For a good pickup, you might pay up to, well, you can pay up to anything really, but you're sort of starting at at least around 60 or 70 pounds for a half okay pickup. Um, if you can have something built in in your guitar, ready to go, then that's a bit of a must in my personal opinion for going out and playing live. Now a lot of acoustic guitar brands will have their own branded pickups um, and preamps. A really good one to look out for, which a lot of companies buy and put into their guitars, are Fishman pickups. Uh, in my opinion, they sound absolutely great. Uh, this guitar I have here has a little Fishman preamp, as you can see. Uh, that's own branded Ibanez. I'll get some close-ups of this properly in a bit. But um, yeah, that's a great one to look out for. Also, if you have any higher brand guitar, they're gonna have a good one. Uh, generally speaking, they're all okay, but just consider I would definitely have um, an inbuilt preamp in my acoustic guitar if I want to go gigging with it. So the other features you probably want to consider when you're looking at acoustic as well, are the tuners and the bridge in the nut. 
Now, some of the cheaper guitars can come with quite bad own brand tuners, so it is worth looking out for if you're sort of deciding between two models and whether it's worth maybe taking that little step up, is the branding of the tuners. A good one to look out for are Grovers, or just play with them when you go to a shop and just see if they feel good. I've noticed on a lot of cheaper acoustic guitars it can be a really bad feature and you can sort of turn for ages and get nowhere with the string tuning and then all of a sudden it'll go and you'll be in a completely different note. So yeah, look out for that. Uh, in terms of your bridge and nut, uh, it's really good to have something that might be synthetic bone or tusk or something that's generally self-lubricating. So what that means if you have a, a better quality nut and it's self-lubricating is um, you're generally going to get less string slip. So if you have cheaper plastic nuts, what will happen is the string will catch on a bit of that rough plastic and again it will just jump suddenly and be in a bit of a tune and it's generally less stable. So if you can look out for anything that's um, Tusk branded, spelled T-U-S-Q, um, that's going to be self-lubricating and quite a good nut or anything that's synthetic bone really. Uh, the better the guitar, generally the better quality of the bridging nut. So whilst we're on the topic of bridging nuts, a really good hack if you have a guitar that's struggling to stay in tune is to take a little bit of pencil and you can rub it in between these bits on the nut and that will just help do that lubrication we're talking about. Just make sure that the string can travel freely and it just helps loads with tuning issues. Uh, the amount of times I've been in the studio and someone's had tuning issues with a guitar and we've done this little hack or done it with um, some lubrication gel that you can get specially. Uh, it just makes such a difference to the guitar and the tuning and it will just be playing better straight away. So if you're having trouble with your acoustic guitar at home, definitely try that first. Uh, there's loads of videos online, but as I say, it's really simple. You just take the strings off, just get a bit of pencil and just work it into there and the graphite will just help the tuning no end. You can also try it on the other end of the guitar if you're struggling there, um, but it is something worth considering doing. So that leads us really nicely onto the topic of playability, which is pretty much the most important thing when you go and look at a guitar, really. Uh, some of the cheaper acoustic guitars, or older ones in particular, can be quite difficult to play. Uh, so I would always recommend, if you can, unless you really know what you're looking for and you're really set, go and try and play one of these acoustic guitars. I've realised this is terrible advice during a lockdown. Uh, but if you can't play it, at least maybe watch a video of someone else playing it online, uh, someone reputable. Um, that you trust and just see what they say about it, see if they think it's good. Uh, but if you can, I'd always recommend going to an independent small guitar shop, go in, they will give you the time of day uh, and just show you through their acoustic guitars and nothing can test a guitar like playing it yourself. Even if you don't really know what you're doing, there's people that are happy to help you at shops and it's just such a valuable experience. I've had it myself where I've bought something online and you've got it and you've just thought, Mm, I maybe should have done this and I've had it several times where I've gone into a, a, a guitar shop and I've thought I'm, I'm set on one guitar and I play it and I'm like mm, not so much and I'll end up buying something that's in a terrible colour or not something I'd gone for originally but it'd just play so much better and be a better instrument. So that hands-on uh, touchy feeliness to try an instrument is just invaluable and I think that's probably even more important than an acoustic guitar. You can see how it fits next to you when you're playing it, you can sort of feel the resonance and yeah, just see how it plays in general. Now having just said all that, there are some absolute bargains to be had if you shop around secondhand. Now all my friends and people that know me know I'm a bit of a stickler for looking at guitars secondhand, and I think if you're a bit more experienced in buying instruments, this can be a really good place to start. If you know the features you're looking for, as in you know the shape of guitar you want, you know you want it to be a certain manufacturer, you know you want it to be solid wood, you can hunt them out and you can get a lot off sort of stock prices. So this guitar in particular is an Ibanez with a really stupid name. It's a catchy AW400CE-LVG, uh, which is great. And I bought this because I saw it come from a Facebook Marketplace for £100. And for the spec of the guitar, I absolutely couldn't believe it was that cheap. I'd never played it, but I saw that it had a mahogany back and sides, real wood. I saw it had a spruce top. Um, I saw it came with Grover tuners, which are very nice and open back and I saw it had a Fishman preamp and I thought for all them features it can't be bad even if it doesn't play great so I went and bit the bullet and got that. Another great sort of brand to look for that uh, seem to depreciate a little bit but not too much are Faith Guitars which is this one. Um, they're some of the nicest guitars I've ever come across. They're so resonant and just beautiful instruments. I'm yet to play a bad one. Uh, I always get really jealous of other people's ones as well. 
uh, they can be had for really cheap as well. Uh, again, just look out for the features. Some of them have preamps, some of them don't, some of them have different level of finish. So it's just looking into that. Uh, and then also you've sort of got your classic brands like your Taylors, your Martins, they always come down a bit and you're generally going to get a good instrument. I'd perhaps be a bit more careful around things like Tanglewoods because I think there's some good ones and some bad ones, but people generally don't sell the good ones if they're nice because they're not really worth a lot. So, you know, just be careful there. But if you see something with great features like we've talked about in this video, maybe go and take a look. Uh, again, play it if you can. Obviously difficult this situation, but yeah, see what's out there. So obviously at the minute it could be a bit hard to go out there and look for a new guitar. So what do you do if you have an old guitar sat in the corner and you want to get playing and it's a bit crap? So I think there's a couple of things you can do. Um, some are pretty awful, but one thing I'd always recommend if it's been sat there ages, take the strings off, give it a good clean. There's loads of cheap cleaning products by people like Fender and stuff on Amazon for about a fiver. Go and get some of them, give it a really good clean. Uh, get some rosewood restorer if you can, or any sort of wood restorer for the neck, and that can be really nice. Uh, get some decent strings for it. I'd always recommend Elixirs. Uh, personally, they're really quite expensive. They're, they can be about 15 or 16 pound a pack, but in my experience, and a lot of other musicians I know, they just last so much longer than other branded strings. Even good ones are normally really rate. You buy a set of strings for like six quid on an acoustic guitar, and it can just stop sounding good after a couple of weeks. Uh, if you get elixirs, I tend to find they last a few months and they're quite hard to break. They've got a special coating on them uh, and I think they're just great strings for an acoustic guitar. Uh, I think it's a bit of a false economy buying other things sometimes, for me personally, so I always get them. Uh, and yeah, if you get the old pencil out on your bad acoustic guitar, uh, do the nut and the bridge trick, get some nice strings on it, that's gonna make a big difference straight away. Uh, the next thing I would consider doing uh, you perhaps need to have a little bit of a background know what you're doing on a guitar, uh, but you can take off this small piece here, the saddle, and uh, this is just a piece of plastic or nut or whatever, or tusk or bone. Uh, you take that out, you put it in a vise or something else and just get some quite fine sandpaper, anything really should do, we're not after the greatest finish, and just go really steady and just take a bit off. Uh, don't go mad with it because you will end up having to have a new nut cut for your guitar. But if you can do this just a bit, this means the whole action of the guitar will come down this way and just make it that much more playable and easy to wrap your fingers around. Uh, I did that on this guitar. This was the one thing I, I didn't really like and I think the person that sold it probably didn't like the playability. Um, so I sanded that down when I got it and now it's an absolutely great guitar. People absolutely love it in the studio. It's got on loads of records already. Uh, and yeah, I love it, but that is three things. What was it for? I can't remember that you can definitely do if you have an old guitar sat in the corner. Um, take the strings off, give it a good clean, buy some new strings, and if you're confident of DIY, maybe sand that down a bit and see if you can get it playing a bit better. Um, it's quite straightforward stuff, but it just makes a massive difference if you maintain an acoustic guitar properly. Uh, all the bad ones always have knackered old strings and you know they're not very well taken care of. Uh, if you take care of an acoustic guitar, uh, most of them, particularly the modern ones, can turn to really nice instruments. So I hope you've all enjoyed this quick little video about what you should look for in an acoustic guitar. I hope you're enjoying all the other videos on the channel. Matt's done some great things about what music distributes to look at and benefits some musicians can get at the minute. Uh, I've been a bit rubbish with my studio update video because I'm currently just stripping wallpaper off. I will do a quick walk around up there, but you'll see where it's at. However, I'm gonna try and do some useful little quick um, videos like this one. Uh, and the next one I think I do is how to get a good sound out of your guitar rec recording from home. Uh, from now on, I think I went a bit crazy walking around my gear in the first video. I'm going to be using what a lot of people have um, to be a bit more relevant. So I'm going to use a little Focusrite 2i2. I think it's the last generation. It's what I'm using now. It's a great little interface. So in the next video, I think we'll look at different ways to mic up an acoustic guitar, uh, things about where to sit in the room, and hopefully that's useful. And then moving forward, I'm gonna crack on doing the studio and see if I can make some interesting videos out of there. Uh, hope you're all staying safe, guys. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Cuddle, peep.